Hey guys, so today we'll talk about Physical Sun and Sky. I'm going to show you how to set it up. It's actually a very unique and cool tool with Maya that allows you to do some really cool things. I'll ignore my windows flickering. That's an easy fix. What I'll do, go in here real quick. There's a little, little extra knowledge for you. I'll just lower one of my zeros on my uh, on my guy. Actually, we'll make us put that zero back because it looks like it totally disappeared. So we'll go in here and we'll just do something like, oh, I don't know. We'll do... Uh, We'll do eight, one, two, three, four. Let's try that. There we go. So you can see them get a little bit less flickery. A little bit less, not a whole lot. Um, that's just because of the distance of the camera only works so far. What we're going to do is set up an actual light system in Maya called the Physical Sun and Sky, which allows us to duplicate, uh, I should say replicate, an outdoor environment. And what I'll do is I'll set this up. I'll show you what the parameters do, how you can tweak them out. And uh, the next video I'll make it during the week, and that one will be about the MIA materials. They can actually complement Physical Sun and Sky. We'll talk a little bit about some of the um, some of the options you have here using Mental Ray. So let's go ahead and get started. So in my scene, initially have my guy set up. Let's turn off our display. Our heads-up display is not needed for this particular uh, demonstration. So we'll turn off the poly count because we are all about rendering. I could also hide my timeline and uh, my uh, little script bar here, a little uh, scroll bar also, we don't really need that, or I always like to keep my status, um, so if something breaks, my I can track it down, stock it. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up our render editors. Now again, you can go and get to it this way, or you can actually use your hotbox. Now again, your hotbox is your best friend, okay? It allows you to open up the things that you need without having to go just a little bit farther over here. I know, it's a lazy man's thing. Um, <laughs> but it's very convenient. So we got this guy set up here. So what we'll do, um, if we wanted to set this up, we can actually put in some mental ray, um, physical sun and sky materials. Now those, if we select mental ray, you'll see all these materials here. Physical sun and sky um, works best with the MIA um, materials, and those being MIA X and uh, MIA in general. Um, because those are architectural materials that allow light to bounce, global illumination. How can I explain global illumination? Well, if you see light in an environment, anytime you see light, anytime you see light refract off a white surface and not refract as much off a darker surface, that is global illumination in its very um, simplest form to explain. It's basically not just one light that illuminates an area, it's global illumination. I know it's like science so it's pretty cool and not that hard to understand concept wise but in Maya it takes a little bit of time to understand all the options that you can get so let's go and close that out we will get to MIA later on in more detail which I mentioned before so we'll go to our windows in this case and um, actually let's go over here we'll go to our render editors we're gonna turn this bad boy on let's turn them on so put up our render settings we're set to mental ray now what you want to do let's go to our indirect lighting now, in Maya 2012, you'll see there's two kinds specifically at the top. Um, later on, we'll talk about image-based lighting and how it can work for you. This is a great tool to make a 3D object look like it's in an actual physical scene. It's used a lot in the industry with multiple different packages, and it's used so that you can actually make a, a creature that, that you know, doesn't exist in the real world. We can make him have the same lighting as, in, as his environment. Um, this can get a little bit taxing depending on the system that you use and depending on how big the scene is. Um, but this or object versus scene and what other items are in the scene. Because this is using image information to cast light on an object. So it's not really using any real physical light. It's kind of nuts. So we're going to go to physical sun and skies. Before I don't want to get too much into buttonology here. Let's click that on. Automatically you see final gather turn on. Now remember global illumination? We talk about how this allows light to bounce and be calculated all through your environment. We can turn this on here, but in this case, a lot of the times, Final Gather and Global Illumination kind of cross over each other. Final Gather gets all the information from Global Illumination and, and all the other settings of your lights and shadows and textures, and it actually gathers all those properties and gives you an option to control your accuracy and your point density. So the higher you go with your accuracy, like say we set this to 500, and point density we set that to 3 or higher, you'll actually see that it starts to look a little bit better. 
will actually gather all that information for the environment refraction, but it can come at a cost. It can get expensive. So now that we have it on, we're going to leave Final Gather on as is right now. And we're going to do a quick render. Now remember, when you render, and I mentioned this before, you do have to make sure you control your quality. In this case, we're going to go in here and we're going to do production just to save some time. Just realize that that's going to be draft by default. Um, and then when that happens, you have to go back and turn Final Gather on. I know. It's kind of dumb. So we're going to go in here and now render. Let's render a shot. It might be set on really big. I've been doing a lot of interface uh, work, and these shots come in pretty big. So if you don't want to sit here all day, what you can do too, let's make this a little bit lower. I'm going to hit escape for a second. We're going to go into our render options, and what we're going to do is we're going to set our render to be like, you know, I don't know, half the size it normally is. So let's go to render, test resolution, set it to 50 right there. Oop, there we go. So now when we render, it won't be quite as big. I have it kind of set to uh, the size that I want and need. Now you'll see this isn't too bad. It does a pretty good job. We have our shadows and it even handles contact shadows somewhat. Not too bad. It does a pretty good job of that. But what you can do when using physical sun in the sky, we scroll down a little bit. Oh, didn't mean to be in that window still. We can go to ambient occlusion. Now let me define this guy. Ambient occlusion, the best way to define this and explain it, is self-shadowing on an object and how that object is shadowed with other objects, not only on itself, but also other objects in general. It's like overlapping shadows. And, uh, and we can control that and make it look more real. Now when you turn this on and using different programs, even bake it in on an object, which I'll show you guys later on how to do, this allows that, that, what it does, it allows the object to feel like it has volume, has place in the world, that it's reacting to light, that it's getting shadows under the surface in different areas in the nooks and crannies all over the place. That was nooks and crannies. I tried to be funny, but it, didn't, it was funnier in my head. So we'll go to ambient occlusion. And I can set this bad boy to, we can set it to uh, 350. You just got to be careful. We'll, we'll do that for now. That's fine. Um, you do normally have to, when you have Final Gather on and even Global Illumination, sometimes you really do have to set this a little bit higher than normal. I have an example, if I can show you real quick, of one that I did. I don't know. You see all my Facebook friends. Don't look. So this is for a video game we're working on. If I scroll down a bit. This guy right here I used. Um, ambient occlusion, it came in kind of nice, nice little dark shadows, even contact shadows you can see closer to the objects. It came in kind of nice. I probably could uh, make my uh, actual light have a higher um, radius, uh, shadow radius, and mess with that and a little bit of the shadow rays to get a little bit more detail in here. Okay, so I'll show that real quick. Let's close this out. Boop. So we go in here. We've got this guy set up. So what is the one thing you notice in here that doesn't quite look right? Um, it's because it looks milky, Sean. Well, thank you, kid. That sounds like a really head trauma Mickey Mouse. So let's go ahead and solve that issue. Uh, so what you can do to solve that, so we have Final Gather on. We'll leave it at 100 for now. That's fine. But let's go in here, and we'll get more into those Final Gather settings later when it comes to our architectural rendering interiors. So what we're going to do is going to open up our options for that light. Now, you'll notice automatically when you do make physical sun and sky, you go down, you'll see sun direction pop into the scene. This sun direction um, allows us to control the light in a very minute way. Now, what I mean by that is if you can turn up intensity, that doesn't mean your light's going to be intense. You actually can't control it here. But you can control, and it's a good habit to get into, to turn on your rays. Your shadow rays by default do show up because it's connected to the camera. So what I mean by that is this light actually can only render in this pers um, perspective camera, which we started. And later on when we talk about part two of this, I'll show you how you can disconnect it and reconnect it to another light. All right, so we have this scene set up here. We need to go to our uh, light node information, which is the one that is connected to the light. So you can actually go here with the light selected, go to MIA Physical Sun and Sky. What this does here is it allows us to control the multiplier. This is where you control the strength of the light. You can, always, you can also control the shift of the color. So if we turn on the IPR render, this is the one that actually renders on the fly. You can actually go in here, hopefully it doesn't crash, please don't crash. It actually updates your render as you're going. So again, that's the IPR render he's found here. Again, a little Hollywood shutter. But notice that was actually pretty fast, faster than our normal um, shot.
So what we can do is we can play with this a little bit. We can say, hey, there's a little more green in my scene. You can put that in there. Oh my god, uh, don't close your eyes. It'll burn the back of your retina. So let's go and tone that down. There we go. I need really need more jokes. Or you can go in here. Notice we kind of went negative. We can just go put it back to 100. Why don't you? There we go. Bam. Back to normal. So that gives you a little bit of idea of how this the control that you have there's your color shift there's also a haze now I don't know if about you but when your grandma yells at you and tells you to put sunscreen I know I really need new jokes um when there's an overcast when there's an overcast things are going to be brighter and you have to be careful of that in real life but here in Maya it tries to imitate that type of situation so if I go in here and say five on my haze you'll notice it's going to get brighter because what Maya is trying to do is replicate how the light comes from the sun and refracts on the clouds. So if you have haze, overcast, believe it or not, things can look a lot brighter. And it is a great time to go take pictures of textures. I thought I'd slip that in there real quick. Let's go and put that back to zero. Here we go. Put it back to normal. We have uh, red shift, blue shift. We have also saturation, horizon height. And if you don't want that around, you can actually get rid of that horizon if you need to. Do a little negative there. You'll see them disappear. There we go. More sky, less ground. And you can control the ground color. And that, again, falls into play with global illumination. So I'm not, I'm not going to get too much more into this. Just a little bit more, and then we'll move on to the, the more important stuff. I don't want to get through every single one. And there's night color. So if you have a nighttime, um, you can actually uh, change a color. Now, what do you mean, what do you have at nighttime? That's not even English. Let me show you what that means. So let's go in here. We have the light selected. And I'm going to increase him so we can actually see this bad boy. There we go. Hit the W key. And I'll put him into position. And as you're working, if you want, you can use all lights, too. I just moved a little bit back there. So let's go ahead and rotate this way. Use all lights will at least give you an idea of what your scene looks like. You can use all lights. There you go. So just a little glimmer of the, the truth. All right. So we got the light here, and you'll notice, let's go and zoom in a little bit. You'll notice as I rotate my light, it works like an actual sun. The time of day is going to change. Now, 3D Studio Maxes, I prefer a little bit more because you can punch in the exact time of day you're looking for instead of having to kind of guess a little bit. And I think there are some plugins on Creative Crash that actually simulate 3D Studio Maxes. Uh, light control in there. So look at that. We can just change the time of day. See, it's like really late at night. You need to go to bed. This is where the color of the night is going to come in, where you can actually change the color of the night. And if you want a particular color to favor, you can do that. There you go. Look at that. Oh, it's so late. All right, so we're going to go here and rotate it on the other direction. And you'll see it'll change. Look, it's early morning. You can go in here and tweak it out. So it's actually really cool. And again, it all depends on the angle of your light, which is nuts. Look at that nice, soft lighting. Pretty good, not too bad. We got our ambient occlusion on too, which is helping out a bit. Probably needs to be cranked up a little bit more. Turn that back to there. So now that we got this set up, what we're gonna do is we're going to go in here and fix some of this because it looks really milky. There's two ways to do this. There's an um, kind of a uh, alpha node um, in Maya, which allows you to go in here, or gamma, I should excuse me, a gamma node in Maya, which allows you to go in here and control the type of display you're getting. So it isn't milky. That's kind of after, that's a filter. That's that node filter. But what we're going to do is go into the camera properties. Because remember when I said the light's connected to the camera? Um, so right now, our physical sun and sky will only render through this camera. So to be able to get to these properties, you can shuffle through here and try to dig for it. Um, but what we're going to do, because you'll notice some things are locked down, what we're going to do, we need to go directly into the camera itself. So let's go to the camera. And what we're looking for is MIA exposure simple turning or messing with this guy allows us to control and remove the milkiness that is in the scene. The two ones you have to deal with are knee and gamma. So if we turn down gamma, you'll notice we get a sharper image. 
and has a little more believability and you'll actually see some of your more of your occlusion coming up into the scene now you gotta be careful you don't want to make it too high you can literally black out your scene where it gets too contrasting so the gamma is kind of like a contrast control so you just gotta be careful and find a nice happy medium of what you're looking for but it can give you a really nice sharp scene now you'll see we have knee we can change a knee around you see knee adds a little bit more detail to the color shift see that right there kind of nice so you can play with both of these and these are primarily the ones we'll be dealing with when dealing with getting rid of that milkiness pretty cool so let's go back to the light real quick I'll cover a few more things and I'll call wrap this one up you also have disk scale so wherever that lights pointing your cameras facing it you can increase the scale of the disk increase the glow intensity of the disk and increase uh, sun disk intensity so you can see the glow and the actual physical shape you can actually control how bright that's going to be alright so that's about it I'm going to show that real quick and uh, just for the heck of it we can probably do uh, one more render here let's go and um, rotate this bad boy oh, I'm in the wrong direction let's try this guy there you go nighttime falls across the land but all of a sudden it's Honey, right there. Okay, I'll try not to sing in my videos from now on. We can also control our shadows if we just shuffle through some of our tabs here. Let's go to MIA Physical Sun, and we can now, and you'll notice these are kind of blocked out, but there's still some things open in here. Shadow softness. You want to make it a little bit softer, and you can increase the samples. In other words, increase, increase the quality of that shadow. You can do so. Remember, these things do take time to render out. So the higher you go, it can be more expensive. Alright, so that's about it with these guys. Hopefully all this helps you guys out. There are a few more other things uh, which we will, should be able to cover later on, such as if you look at sun shape. Um, this is the initial um, node for it, which we talked about, which has a little bit of control, but not very much. And but there's also sun direction, so you can actually control some of that too. All right, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.